What's up, folks? Your boy Paul Buck in the building. So I'm getting guys my six card Fire Fist versus Dragon Ruler Blue Eyes. So I played against this deck at locals the other day. Shout out to Paul Kim. So I was I played against this deck, and this deck is a really annoying deck. Like, and when you, like when this deck goes off and you go with the with the like first turn rank eight plays, it's very stressful. Like if you look at a first turn fell man, and you just and you just have all these nice combo pieces in your hand. You're just like, damn, I'm forced to do, I'm forced to, I'm forced to neg one to balance out their neg. So he goes with a first turn Draco side. I was debating on going for a really dangerous setup, but instead I was like, I was fine with it. But he had he had bombless shot fall. I wonder why did he not bombless? When you had the chance, I mean, there was no Gyoku, so I don't know why you can do that. So he just go Draco Sack, and I'm gonna he just target tanking. Um, I didn't the reason why I didn't want to activate Tenson because I want to see if we could try to push forward because he just I could just get, he just he could just go oh oh I just end turn and then they, I'm like damn I just wasted Tenson for no reason so. I tense in the title away. Tense in the title away. I top deck MSC. I MSC the card because I just thought about you know the possible things that could actually stop me from going off, which was bottomless. So I go for the I go for Buffalo pitch tense and saddle, which I'm out of cards. But but again, you know he he has he has no cards as well. So I'm going to Cardinal Cardinal's effect. I'm gonna target Draco Sack and Title, put him back into the deck because that's his dragon ruler that's that's keeping him alive. We're well, not keeping him alive, but that's that's keeping him in motion. So he top decks the blaster, and he just starts to go on a crazy drawing spree, man. I just hate dragon rules when he do that. She's like, look at that. Oh, draw, draw, draw. Oh, I'm back to five, but I'm on back. I'm back to five cards and my three cards. My heart, right, whatever. So I'm gonna keep poking and keep poking until I get so I can get a card that can end the duel because at the same time though Swallow and Tato not 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 Tato Cardinal is doing is doing is doing the job so far. So he's going on this crazy draw spree, just drawing digging into his deck. He just go Tato, cards consonants, and he just says oh, a shit low back row. So I'm just like God damn. So I just take the risk of just attacking and I'm just I'm just keep I'm just swinging at everything because I don't wanna I don't really wanna summon any monsters and I thought about it but I was like nah there's no there's no reason for me to so and right there he scooped up immediately because I did not summon I chose not to summon and look at this torrential tribute double skill drain I would have lost so let's go to game alright so this is game two so, game two, I sided in Double Vanity's Emptiness, and yeah, I sided in Double Vanity's Emptiness. I took out, I think I took out some warning, and I, t and I was debating on taking out Valor. I was debating on it. So, he did go for a card card D play, draw, discard two cards, add a card, discard another one, so he just fills up his graveyard. We're full of dragon stuff. I topped the transmodify, so I'm like, okay, so I could I could make this into a really nice combo. So I'm gonna go Raven, get the Tensu, and we're gonna summon out, we're gonna summon out Caribou, summon out Caribou, flip up Hog, because instead of going to Karen, I could just go, I could go for more damage this way because I'm out of I'm out of normal summons and there was no reason for me to go into Karen yet. Now main phase two, we're going to Karen and and just look how. Dangerous Kieran's looking right now. Like, jeez. Man, look at that. 33. Not even Star Eater can't get through that booty. He can't. That, that is alignment. Alignment right there. So, I'm going to go for the Wolf Art play. I'm going to go Tensu after the Tensu because unfortunately, I was supposed to get another Tenken, but I didn't get the Tenken. So, so you go for Buy MST. He gets my he gets my bottomless. He didn't get tanking, unfortunately. So he's gonna go overlay, 
big guy and right here I just I just did LOL and just like flip tank in and right there he really cannot do anything so he just nagged completely so he nags a draw draw for turn and look at look at Kieran and I top deck the Gyoku use Wolfbar's effect bring out Boar Synchro on the Crimson Blader and right there he scoops his melee because he killed his game so Let's get to the bonus game. Alright, so the bonus game will be on my on the Fire Kings. So I opened up really good with this hand. I was just thinking in my head, alright, you know what? How can I set this up to where I can just hurt my opponent and make him cry? So he summons Hero Trove. I'm just like, oh, he's playing Evil Storm. I have Flying C. Thank you, Base Kunami, for giving me this lovely card. So I'm in a generation shift, and now uh, I'm gonna tell you where or it's went wrong. First things first, I was supposed to get Yasha and then get Sacred Phoenix and blow up everything, but instead, you know, it's fine with me. I get two pluses, two pluses. I set another big Grunix, and I set the Circle of the Fire Kings because I just, I'm just, I'm just amazing. Jeez, what, what can you do? So you get to go Magigar, cast it. I'm gonna drop Flying C on him. So now he can't go into Opion, which is preventing him from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And right there, what can you do? Now he is staring, he is staring at Ayasha and I'm going to send Sacred Phoenix because I don't like back row. I really don't. I don't care. I don't care what type of back row it is. I don't like back row. So Sacred Phoenix is going to come out, blow up the field. He's going to activate Infection and he's going to activate Bottomless in response. Unfortunately, that sucks. But you know what? I'm so I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm so good. So, so my head. All right, I got him down. I got him down to thinking. I'm not killing Flying C yet. I want to keep him. I want to keep him occupied. I want to keep him occupied. And he has. Oh, he has one dark engrave. One dark engrave. So, I'm just keeping it. I'm just keeping. Keep him occupied, keep him occupied. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting out. Unfortunately, draw the deck card against against Fire Kings because I'm not bringing out Wolf Park at all. So the moment I top deck fetching Fire Ferret, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna kill the Flying C. So I'm gonna force him to, to drop his hand, see what what he can actually do. So he doesn't activate Dark Hope because he's scared of you know Runix and you know instant instant dirty plays. So he's gonna he's gonna swing over my Barong. And he's gonna swing over Fairy, and I'm gonna pop the Kirky on. He decides not to drop Dark Arm, which is understandable because you don't want you know a Fire King player to blow up your field. And knowing that I had Onslaught in my hand, yeah. So I go in, I go into the back row because I have Lance in my hand, so I wasn't I wasn't afraid of D Prison at all. So he's gonna activate the MST, getting my getting my bluff Tensu. Grunis here come out on the field, I put him in defense mode. The reason why I put him in defense mode is because I'm scared of number 101 and even, and even if they attack, I'm just going to lance their monster and so they can run into my defense. So I'm going to keep swinging, keep swinging, keep swinging. Keep swinging, got him, I got him, I got him, I got him pressured right now. I got him pressured. Oh, that's where you got the Phoenix Chain at. Your trick, your trick, your trick. And then right there, the best. Around, I talked it rekindling, and this is your boy Paul Blake out. Um, like, comment, and subscribe, and I am out. Ciao.